everyone, I'm Kirby, this is Kirby Meets Audio, and we're gonna design another speaker together. This project is a little different from the last series I did. This time we're gonna design a 2.1 soundbar system for a living room TV setup. Over at kmakits.com, I have a downloadable worksheet that'll help you through this process of step one. Having that in front of you might help make sense of everything we're gonna be talking about today. This setup is for a friend of mine, so we're gonna design it around his current setup and his needs. Right now, he's using just his standard TV speakers, so pretty much anything we do is gonna be a nice upgrade. <laughs> Kinda takes a little bit of pressure off. This is step one in our six step process. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to check out my last design series, I'll throw a link right up there. But in this first step, we're gonna be writing down a basic plan for this design. And to get started, we're gonna ask ourselves a few basic questions. These are the same questions and methods I use for all my designs, and I'm pretty sure they'll work pretty well for your future projects too. All right, question one, what would the speaker be used for? Well, we kind of already answered this, but to be specific, it'll be mostly used for watching TV and movies. It also has to be able to handle some music listening, but we're not looking for a critical listening setup here, uh, just some background music, just hanging out around the house. Question two is where are these speakers gonna be located? The soundbar will most likely be mounted on the wall right below the TV, about six to 10 feet away from the listeners. Uh, the couch setup in this room is kind of like an L shape, so some of the listeners will be straight on with the speakers, while others will be at around a 30 degree angle. So we use our answers to these questions to get our minds working about what we can and can't do with this project. And then we use that work to make our goals and constraints list. And if you happen to be wondering how a constraints list could possibly help your project, uh, go watch this video. All right, here's our constraints list. First on the list is budget. This one's pretty much always on my constraints list. I don't have an exact budget for this build, but we wanna keep it pretty reasonable. An eight inch Ultimax subwoofer. So I already know which driver I'll be using for the sub because it's the one I happen to have on hand and it's a pretty good one. Powered sub. This is a pretty beefy sub, so it'll need a lot of power to move it. A small sub enclosure. This setup's gonna be in a living room and I don't want a huge sub blocking any walking paths, so smaller the better. And last but not least, a sealed soundbar. The soundbar is gonna be mounted on the wall right below the TV, so I don't wanna worry about port locations, so it's gonna have to be sealed. All right, now let's talk goals. A two-way soundbar. I thought about making this a point source soundbar, but I think I'm gonna add a tweeter to help with the offset and fidelity. 30 hertz on the sub. Since this is gonna be for movie watching, I want the sub to get as low as it'll go. Uh, I think we can hit around 30 hertz. Simple enclosure aesthetic. It still needs to look great, but I don't think I'm gonna be doing anything too flashy with this build. A simple crossover. I like to keep my crossovers pretty simple and just in general, but I think we can get away with a real nice simple crossover here. All right, so this is all really good information that we can call back and refer to throughout the design process. But right now, there are two important decisions we need to make. The first one being enclosure type and the second crossover type. Every step in this design process is evolving as we move from step to step. Very rarely is it a linear stepped process. I might go back and forth between steps multiple times or even start back over here at step one at some point during the project. So making any of these decisions now doesn't set them in stone. We're just planning our bearing of direction in this step. Uh, we'll iterate as needed moving forward. All right, let's choose an enclosure type. I actually have a video on selecting enclosure types. I'll link that right up here. But the most common enclosure types are sealed, ported, and passive radiator. So let's start with sealed for the subwoofer. Looking at our constraints list, sealed definitely works to help us stay in budget because no port means less components, but budget isn't a huge concern here. And I'd say a higher priority is one of our goals of hitting 30 Hertz. Since we already know which driver we'll be using for the sub, we're kind of ahead of the process already. Uh, I'll have to run the models for the enclosure in step three, but I suspect we're more likely to hit that 30 hertz mark with a vented enclosure. So another great option would be to use passive radiators. This would keep the enclosure size of the sub to a minimum, but I'm not sure I can actually get radiators that can handle the Ultimax. 
I'm gonna have to look into that. As for the sound bar, we already know we want it sealed as to not worry about port placement. And we don't really have to worry much about base extension with the sound bar. The subwoofer will be able to handle anything below whatever it puts out. Uh, I'm shooting for a crossover point of about 150 to 200 Hertz. All right, let's talk crossover types. So I also have a video on selecting crossover types. So I'll link it right up here. Lots of links to this video. But some examples of crossover types are one-way, two-way, 2.5-way, and three-way, with the most common being a two-way crossover setup. So we don't have to worry about the subwoofer because the crossover will be handled by the plate amplifier. But we do need to think about the sound bar. Like I said during the goals and constraints list, I thought about leaving out a tweeter and doing a one-way system on the sound bar and maybe adding a simple baffle step correction circuit. And I'm still gonna keep that in mind, maybe. But the other option is to throw a tweeter in there and go with a two-way. Depending on the drivers we select, this usually offers a better sound and some clarity in the top end while watching movies and listening to music. This is all still up in the air, but I've got a few ideas rattling around. I might even do a 3.1 system with a two-way center channel and one-way point source stereo mains, but that's kind of the whole point of this step, uh, to, to get your mind working and get some ideas down on paper. All right, so that's pretty much it for step one. Uh, I hope that got you thinking and maybe a little inspired for your next project. And remember to get that worksheet and there's links down in the description. If you're interested in building a pair of speakers of your own, head over to kmakits.com where you can find free build plans or complete build kits available for purchase. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Just, you know, express yourself. If you're new here and you like this video, please hit that subscription button, then hit that little bell if you want updates on when I post videos. I also have a Patreon where fans like you help me make videos like this one. And if you wanna see the behind the scenes of making these videos or my speaker building or just my life in general, hit me up on Instagram. Uh, just search Kirby Meets Audio or there's links down there. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm excited about this project. The last series was fun, um, but this one's a little different. It's gonna be good. All right, I'll see you guys next week with step two. Bye.